index laws basic. So we're going to look at four index laws in this video and an index law is a rule that's going to help us when dealing with indices. So let's have a look at 2 cubed multiplied by 2 to the power of 4. Obviously we could just do these individually then multiply them together but let's have a look a little bit close a bit closer at this. Well 2 cubed means 2 times 2 times 2 and we're multiplying that by 2 to the power of 4 which means 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 and <clears throat> if you look at this we've just got 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 so altogether we've got 2 to the power of 7 and what do you notice about 3 4 and 7 well hopefully you can see that to get 7 we could have just done 3 plus 4 and that's our first index law and what's really important to note here is that it was 2 to the power of 3, 2 to the power of 4, and 2 to the power of 7. So the things we're multiplying have to have the same base uh, in order to do this rule and ends up with the same base. So let's try and write this as a rule. So if we've got some number a to a base to a power of some number n multiplied another number with the same base a to the power of m, that's going to equal that same base a to the power of n plus m. Okay, so you can see we're in the above example, a was 2, n was 3, and m was 4, and 3 plus 4 gave us 7. And that's our first index law. <clears throat> Let's have a look at another example. What if we had 2 to stick with red, 2 to the power of 7 divided by 2 to the power of 3. Well, another way to write that is 2 to the power of 7 over 2 to the power of 3. And another way to write that is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, times two over 2 times 2 times 2. Oops. And what happens here is, <clears throat> well, 2 divided by 2 is 1, 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 2 divided by 2 is 1. So all we're left with is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Another way to write that is 2 to the power of 4. So can we see what happened here? We had 2 to the power of 7 divided by 2 to the power of 3 ended up equaling 2 to the power of 4. What's the relationship between 7, 3, and 4? Well, 7 minus 3 is 4. So it's the opposite of our multiplying, our multiplying index law. We're multiplying two numbers with the same base, we add the powers. When dividing two numbers with the same base, we subtract the powers. So let's write that as a law, where we have a to the power of n divided by a to the power of m equals a to the power of n minus m. All right, let's have a look at another one. Let's look at 3 to the power of 4. 3 to the power of 4 means 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, which is actually 81. 3 to the power of 3 means 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. 3 to the power of 2 equals 3 times 3, which is 9. 3 to the power of 1 is just 3. And what's happening here each time? Is there a pattern that we can see to go from here, 81 to 27, 27 to 9, and 9 to 3? Hopefully you can see that if we divide each of those by 3, we get down to the next one. Because 81 divided by 3 gives us 27, 27 divided by 3 gives us 9, 9 divided by 3 gives us 3. 
And that's actually going to help us see our next one, which is 3 to the power of 0. Well, we can follow the same pattern, dividing the 1 above by 3, and 3 divided by 3 is 1. And we get 3 to the power of 0 equals 1, and that's actually true for any number to the power of 0, it always equals 1. So that's our next index law. Any number a to the power of 0 actually equals 1, except we don't want a to be 0 for that, because 0 to the power of 0 is actually undefined. Because it's like, it'd be like dividing by 0, and we can't divide by 0. That's our third index law. We're going to look at another one. One more. Let's look at 3 to the power of 3, all to the power of 2. Well, another way to write that, well, let's look at the 3 to the power of 3 inside the bracket. That just means 3 times 3 times 3. And all that's to the power of 2 means we need to multiply this by itself two times. So we get 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Well, that's just 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, which is 3 to the power of 6. And what's the relationship between 3, 2, and 6? Well, 3 times 2 gives us 6. And that's our last index law that we're going to look at. So if we have a to the power of m, and all of that is to the power of some number n, we can say that it equals a to the power of m times n. Another way to write m times m is mn. So we could have done that straight away with our previous example. We could have said 3 to the power of 3 to the power of 2. Well, we have a power to a power. So another way to think about this is that when we have a power to a power, we just multiply those powers together. So it ends up being 3 to the power of 3 times 2, which is 6. Thank you.